here to start a trilogy of videos that I do roughly every couple of years where I talk about books that I think are underhyped, correctly hyped, and what we are going to talk about today is overhyped. Now, caveat here is that some of these books I actually really, really like. I can think of at least two that I've given four and a half stars to. So it's not that I'm necessarily saying that I think quality is bad. I'm just saying that vis-a-vis -vis the appeal of the book, the wideness with which it's recommended, uh, how people talk about the book, something about it, in my opinion, is overhyped. And this is my opportunity to try to like do some expectation management, because sometimes I think these are books that I would have liked better had they not been so overhyped. And I don't know if you can hear Marple, she's going through it. She's also mad that these are overhyped. So with that, maybe, you know, just to be spicy, let's start with books that I like, but agree are overhyped. First one, I originally had this in my correctly hyped. And then when I was starting to talk about it, I was like, no, that's not right. Uh, the Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James. I love this book. I gave this four and a half stars. I am so surprised that people like it as much as they apparently do, because it's not, it's a horror supernatural kind of story. It's about a ghost, but it's very focused on the love story. So for me, that's a nice balance that tonally works for me, but I'm just surprised as many people like that as do. And I would not necessarily recommend this as widely as it is recommended. I think that there's, I can completely understand people who are not into that as a tone. So I guess I'm just surprised that this is as popular as it is, despite the fact that I love it. The Writing Retreat. Now you guys have heard me talk about this quite a bit this year. This is one where it's so campy and it is a suspense, not a thriller. And for that reason, I would not widely recommend this, but I love For me, it completely worked with however the top it is, but I'm so surprised that it's a Book of the Month Club pick. I'm so surprised that this is getting as much hype and push as it is, because to me, this feels like a more niche book. But apparently I'm wrong about that because it is getting a big push. But just know that I personally don't necessarily recommend this to everyone. Proceed with caution if the things I just mentioned sound interesting to you. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Now you guys know I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Her, um, oh God, what was that called? I can't remember, but the YA Supernatural Criminal Minds series she has. The Naturals, that's what it was called, the Natural series. I love that. That's probably my favorite YA mystery thriller type series that I've read. So I really enjoy her work, but I am so surprised that this has been her breakout because I think that this is her weakest trilogy. I liked the first one, but I thought the next two were really let down. So I think that this is really overhyped and I would recommend, well, I'm not mad that it's hyped because I like her so much. So I would recommend springboarding from this hype series to what I think are her better series. So I would recommend The Naturals and I would recommend her Fixer duology over this series personally. And then I think the rest of these I don't have in physical form, so gonna consult my little notebook. So other ones that I thought were fine to good, but I think are overhyped. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Now I assume that the reason, several of these, I think the reason they're hyped is because they are, they already have been or are being made into some kind of televised or film version. So I assume that that's why My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix is getting so hyped, but it's actually my least favorite book from him so far. It's not bad, I like it, but it is my least favorite. So for me, it feels overhyped and I'm surprised it's the one that is being adapted. Let's see, do I have any other ones that I liked? I thought The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce, I think was her name, was fine. Like it was good. It's an isolation thriller-ish. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was okay, but it's a Reese's Book Club pick and I'm not sure why. Like, I think there's nothing remarkable about it at all. It was entertaining, but not memorable. And it's a series? Like, I think that there's a follow-up? I don't know. That one I think is overhyped and kind of a mystery to me. Monroe, okay, this is controversial. Monroe by Cresley Cole. I put this as overhyped because we had to wait years and years for it and it was fine, but it's not the main story people want in the Immortals After Dark series. 
Like, th that's not one of the main threads that I think people were dying to get the, you know, to hear more about. I've not heard, well, actually, let me know in the comments. I have not heard if we're getting, if and when we're getting the next one. And I totally understand Cresley Cole has had some like extenuating life circumstances, which is why there's been such a long wait. Um, so I'm not trying to like knock her for that or anything. I'm just saying that as a reader and as an experience to have waited that long for a book that was fine, I think is disappointing. And it felt therefore it was such a clamor when it was coming out. And I felt like it was overhyped for the book that we actually ended up getting. I am still left wanting that arc to be finished. And then are there any other ones of these that I liked? Oh yeah, Still Life by Louise Penny. That's the first book in her Inspector Armand Gamache, I think is that guy's name. So this is a super hyped series. This is probably the series, at least to me, this was a very hyped series to me. This is probably the series I've had people recommend to me the most based on the fact that they know that I like Agatha Christie so much. I thought the first book was okay. It was fine. It was enjoyable. But if you had told me, like if I just picked that book up without knowing how much people love this series, I would have not thought about it again ever in my life and would not even consider continuing in it because it was okay. Not that memorable or great in my opinion. <laughs> like I think I gave it three stars. Like it was fine. Um, I am going to continue with the books that I already procured based on how hyped it was. And I have not decided yet if I'm going to finish the series because based on what I've read so far, I wouldn't. But people have hyped it up so much to me that I feel like I kind of have to. So for that reason, that book at least in particular feels overhyped. We'll find out if I think the series as a whole is overhyped as I make some more progress. And then the rest of these... I'm not, some of these I actively really did not like and some of these I just didn't, you know, I was more meh on. But let's start with my DNS. I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay is a huge book this year and they are hyping it as a literary mystery thriller. No, I don't think so. It doesn't really, I don't think it's delivering the mystery or the thrill, <laughs> at least not for me. It's a literary take on true crime and like our fascination with true crime. But it reads to me like a book that is asking questions that people who are more familiar with that genre have been asking for years. So it doesn't feel fresh or like a good perspective on it. And the writing to me was unbearable. So for me, very overhyped. And that's why I DNF'd it. But I would I don't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily disrecommend people reading it. But if you read it, know that it is literary and not like really a mystery thriller, like not it doesn't read like a genre fiction book. Um, Atlas Six, I DNF'd again, because I found the writing unbearable. It's so overwritten. And I guess the reason I think of this is overhyped is why this book? It feels very generic from what I encountered in it in terms of like magic school or magic competition. So I don't know, is it, I've heard that there's a threesome later in the book. People just really hyped up about this threesome because let me tell you, I've got some Kindle Unlimited stuff I could recommend to you instead. I don't know. I just don't know why this book. Ninth House is the other DNF I thought I would mention as overhyped. Am I gonna, I'm gonna say it. So far from what, I, what I've encountered from Lee Bardugo in general, she seems very overhyped to me. Now, I've read Six of Crows, but I have not yet read Crooked Kingdom, so maybe that will revise my opinion. Ninth House I DNF because I could not deal with the writing. I did not enjoy it, but I know so many people who love this. I love, who love her and love this book in particular. I know Marvel, I don't know. It's a mystery. So yeah, I just, I don't know. It, I, I kind of don't get why she's so hyped in general. I wonder if she kind of hit a tone and a market at the right time in the development of YA and then that has like launched her career from there. I don't know. So yeah, that, that one in particular felt overhyped to me. Okay, two that I think are hyped because they've gotten adaptations. Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty and The Last Thing He Told Me by I think Laura Davis. Just both of them are mid at best. Especially The Last Thing He Told Me. That one just felt very bland to me. And that's another one where I'm like, why was this a Reese book club pick? Like, why did they single this one out? And then why is it getting adapted? I mean, I, I assume the answer is because it's a Reese's book club pick and they have like deals to make that happen. But 
Ooh, I don't know, just of all the mystery thriller, why this one? I have no idea. Uh, and Nine Perfect Strangers was just, I think the author thought that she was much funnier than I found her. Um, I thought she, it, it felt like she thought she was being quirky and like going for a tone. I don't know. So like, I guess this one, I at least understand why it got adapted because it is kind of a wackadoo story. So I kind of, I at least can kind of see that at least. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, if that's what Leanne Moriarty's writing is always like, I would say in general, I find her overhyped, but I don't know. That's the only one I've read. Uh, Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Another just very, uh, one of those books that totally is riding the coattails of the success of a previous book because Into the Water is so n bland and nondescript that there's no way it would be, it would have been such a big hit when it came out had it not been for the girl on the train. No way. Okay, and then To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. It's so long and it's fine as a piece of kind of like literary speculativeness, but it's not memorable or great. And I just, I find it presumptuous for people to write books that length that are not great. It, it feels arrogant to me. <laughs> um, and I'm sure I'm, I'm being a little facetious there. I'm being a little sassy. I, I don't completely feel that way, but I will say in general, there feels like there's a trend in, in publishing these days where people are not edited properly. I talked about this with Elle and Jess on a World Hoppers video, and this definitely feels like it falls into that category. Oh, okay. And then the last one I had is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. Look, you guys know how I feel about that book. That book, the, oh God, I just, I can't, I still am in awe that the ending that we get in that book is the ending. When I was reading it, I thought that it was a red herring because it's such a cliche and it's such uh, in my opinion, stupid ending. And the fact that that was actually the ending and people love it, I don't understand. It's so overhyped to me. Sorry, Marple is rubbing her sweet little face on the tripod. Um, I just, I don't get it. There's so many other isolation stories. Like I, you guys know, I don't love the guest list. I would take the guest list over Daisy Darker any day of the week, certainly. Same for the hunting party. I also, I, you know, Lucy Foley is not always, is not for me, but I can at least respect what she does with the isolation tropes and the kind of close circle tropes. It's not for me, but I, I get it. So far from what I've seen from Alice Feeney, the two I've read, I, I just don't get it. So it feels very overhyped to me. I'm gonna read one more from her and we'll find out if it's just always that way or I just happen to read two bad ones. But anyway, Daisy Darker being as hyped as it was is an absolute mystery to me. So with that being said, those are the overhyped books that I called out of the hundreds I have read since I last did this video. And um, yeah, I like I said, this is always very relative because it depends on what circles you're running in as to what is getting hyped. But these were ones that were very hyped in the circles I inhabit in the bookish internet. And uh, yeah, I'd be curious if these were overhyped to you guys or correctly hyped, underhyped, whatever. Let me know about any other overhyped books that you are baffled by their popularity. And uh, yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.